while trying to forecast tornadoes, there's a ton of data, computer models, imagery, and layers to analyze. Upper level winds, the lower level winds, surface winds, temperatures, and dew points, potential energy, the cap, the spin in the atmosphere, and actual photographs from space. It's all enough to make your head spin. After you choose your target area, you can check several weather models to see if and how precipitation is forecast to break out in the region you think is most favorable. This can really help you dial in your forecast. One of the computer models that I use to see precipitation forecasts is the HRRR, or the HER. It's a high resolution model that can help decipher what kinds of storms might occur. But how accurate is the HER? In this lecture, I show how I use the HER to forecast several tornado events. This was a live stream recording from the 2018 Ohio University Meteorology Symposium. For a more clear understanding of the jargon I'm whizzing through, turn on your subtitles. If you don't understand a term, I'm putting a brief glossary in the description. Hope you enjoy. Everyone, please welcome Dean Chima. Hello, Jack. Great to be in Ohio. Thank you guys so much for having me out. I couldn't be more grateful to be here. Uh, we're going to be talking about how I apply the HER to uh, storm chasing. So for those of you at home, there's all sorts of uh, computer models and weather models we use, uh, which are really great for confirmation bias. If you've got a target area that you really want to chase in, one of these models is probably going to say that's going to be a good place to chase. So here's two different models, the GFS on the left, Brandon Ivy likes to call it the Goofus, and it's got a 13 kilometer resolution, so you kind of see a, a brush stroke of precipitation here in Florida, whereas the HRRR, we call it the HER, or the HER in some countries. <laughs> kind of, you know, that'd be so awesome if you guys could get that to catch on. <laughs> so you can kind of start to see cellular modes, and, and I mean, it almost looks like a reflectivity scan. So the HER stands for the High Resolution Rapid Refresh. It's a short range weather model. You guys all know this, it updates hourly, up to 18 hours, three kilometer resolution. And that's it? Oh, okay, here we go. Okay. So here's, the, here's, here's our first day. Uh, so I had, I had, I thought this was gonna be a 40 minute lecture. And also, goes, no, it's, it's 25 minutes. And I didn't know they had 25 minute lectures. And so I cut it in half, and then he emailed me and says, uh, in a very kind, professional way, he says, there's no way you're going to get through eight, 108 slides. So I'm challenging you right now. All right. All right, so here's my target area. This is the midnight run for 3 p.m. that day, and, and we can kind of see some showers start happening you know inside our target area notice we've got that cell north of lamar the 2 a.m run 4 p.m again we've got some showers perhaps some cellular modes of storms inside our target area. so we're going to expect initiation around three or four on this day and then again you've got that cell north of lamar so here's my spaghetti. Some people stare into a crystal ball to see the future. I stare into spaghetti. Uh, Storm Prediction Center gives an enhanced outlook, 5% chance of tornadoes inside a given area. And okay, here's our GOES image for 215 here. And there's that cell north of Lamar, kind of spooky, or maybe it's just coincidence. They just got lucky. So uh, 3, 215 inside my target area, there's nothing going on, and, and this, we're going to superimpose reflectivity over it, goes tornado horn and drops a really photogenic tornado. So here we are sitting down in kind of these cirrus skies, you know, do we try to make the plunge two hours north, and, and, and I don't know, let's check the herd. 1 p.m. run for her says, no, nah, stay where you are, we're going to, it's going to happen, so just, just hang tight. Here we are, 3 p.m., still nothing's going on. Our cell's going nuts up there in uh, Colorado. But notice down here, you can kind of start to see, and you, you would see this more in animation, some little bubbling up, so maybe some curious towers starting to happen right there. And, whoops, look, yeah, yeah. reflectivity, yeah, confirms there's rain, so yeah, okay, we've got something coming. Actually, I, you could see, I'm, I'm right there looking at them, and I can see their cumulus towers. 
Okay, and 403, here we are. So we've got our cells happening. They're coming into our target here. So the herb kind of did a pretty good job of nailing initiation. And cellular storms are ongoing at 4 p.m. as called out by the herd. Here I am at 6, 16 p.m. I'm on the tail end. Strongest cell. It's tornado worn. And it produces a couple of tornadoes. Here's a comparison of the 1 p.m. run to 4 p.m. what actually happens. So uh, what actually happened, the cells are a little bit further west, but not too bad, right? B, B plus, A plus maybe, depending on if you made the model or not. And uh, here's the tornado that I got that day. This is a really strange tornado. I thought I was seeing two tornadoes. The lobe on the right is actually a, a tornado. See, they're kind of orbiting around each other. They're doing this do se do uh, coming out of a flat base. And I thought I was seeing multiple tornadoes here. And again, look behind that one. You can see another one. What we're looking at are giant suction vortices. The tornado is all up here above the base. And these are just giant suction vortices that are stemming down from the base all the way to the ground. I've never seen that. It goes to show you can see it. 150 tornadoes and still see something that you've, you've never seen. Here it is again. There's this other tornado kind of here, and they just keep orbiting around each other. All right, next day, here's my spaghetti. So I think I did the wrap earlier in the morning, and uh, I had two clusters of thunderstorms I'm looking at, one up here in good, pretty good chase terrain, and then one down here in terrible chase terrain. So I'm going to put our target area right in the middle, but then Storm Prediction Center says, hey, we got 10% chance down here. That That's going to amount to something, right? You know, the Storm Prediction Center guys kind of kind of know what they're doing, right? So when in doubt, I've learned, just, just go with the Storm Prediction Center. So, uh, and then down here, that's also a little closer to my wife's cooking, so I'm kind of <laughs> liking it, that, that, that cluster. Then, 11.30, Storm Prediction Center does this. When you see the black hatch marks there, that means a chance of significant tornadoes. You have two and larger. So, okay, this, this could get serious. So my target area is still right here. I'm gonna, gonna hold on to that spot. Let's check the 12 p.m. run for 5 p.m. So one of the things you got, take these her examples that I'm giving with a grain of salt. Uh, you know, when you're, you're driving across the country, you know, most of the uh, data that you're getting is between when you order your breakfast burrito and when you get your breakfast burrito. That's how long you have to forecast after you did your initial motel morning forecast. But check this out, we've got some pretty good cellular structure. That looks like supercells to me, you know, given how volatile the atmosphere was that day. I'm gonna say those are supercells, you know, just east of I-35, just north of the Red River, kind of in our target area. So I'm that's I'm starting to get high confidence that I'm in the right spot. Here's our goes. Got this nice boundary being defined by this Q field. We've got some uh, cumulus clusters starting to go up. We're starting to see some little anvilling going on. Let's check reflectivity. We've got some precipitation. So I'm here. Let's just sit, wait a little bit longer before we commit to it. And here's the storm approaching. So at this point, we're ready to commit to the storm. There's probably not going to be a whole lot of forecasting from this point on. So the her we were expecting cellular structure by 5 p.m. That's the only forecast that we were able to get that day. 3.38 p.m., we've got that cell. And then 5.8, here's a grab. And so, yeah, we've got cellular structure east of I-35, north of the Red River, a little bit more uh, intense in coverage, but, but still pretty, pretty darn good. Here's a comparison of the 5 p.m. run, or one of the runs for 5 p.m. and what actually happened at 5 p.m. So you can see there's a lot more coverage of these cellular storms. And then so here's what that storm brought to us. This is the KD Wimbled EF4 developing right here. There's a little closer shot of it. Uh, here it is lifting a roof off its house. Uh, this is an EF4 at this point, and I will watch entire roof trusses, which are these triangles of two by fours make several orbits around this tornado way out here and then before just slamming them back down to earth. Here's the Roger Hill tour group getting a money's worth, I'd say. <laughs> Here's the tornado going off. It's about to cross I-35. And here's the next tornado of the day. This is the Sulphur EF3. This is uh, close to a mile and a half wide. Uh, got a high end EF3 only because it, buildings that it hit were anchored. So we got some pretty good scans up here that said 200 miles per hour. So, and the, the rotation 
of this mesocyclone. When you see something like this in real life, it's just it's mind-blowing how fast these clouds are looping around. And you're scared at this point that you've got a job to do. So here's about as close as I could get to that before two big of things were falling down. And just over this hill, I stopped. And I think Tim Marshall's group twirl was even further. Even. So that was that day. So we'll give the her a, a B, B plus if, you know, if, if we're going to be you know, not so cool. You know, a, a minus if you're cool. Okay, next event, 5, 16, 16. We've got this teardrop shaped slight risk. Uh, you know, are the cells going to start here and come down? Or are they going to start here and move? Let's, you know, I'm not sure at this point. Let's check the herd. So here's the 2 a.m. run for 2 p.m. And we've got these cells that are forming on a little surface load here. And here's the 7 a.m. run for 2 p.m. So we've got the same thing. That looks like some cellular structure forming right here. So we're going to expect initiation by 2 p.m. on this day. 7 a.m. run for 7 p.m. And it looks like kind of an MCS is going to drift, uh, track, you know, southeast into Oklahoma. So we're expecting a storm cluster spreading into the panhandles. 10 a.m. for 2 p.m. Again, we've got, I mean, it's just run for run. It's, it's given us confidence that this might actually happen. And it, it'd be really fun I, I, if you can do this sometimes, as you guys know, for those of you at home, you can go down the chart of the herd and kind of get more of an ensemble if you just go 2 p.m., 2 p.m., 2 p.m. and watch, watch it kind of move around and get, you know, an idea of what perhaps to expect that day. 10 a.m. run for 3 p.m. And, and again, you've got just these cells. It's saying cells are going to fire up right there and then, you know, move southeast into the panhandles. Here's our 1237 goes. We've got a clearing right here. That's always nice to see. And it looks like a little cluster of cumulus clouds forming. Let's check reflectivity. Yeah, we've got some rain. So what do you do? Do you commit? Are we confident enough at this point or do we hang back? Anybody? Yeah, we go. Okay. Do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're gonna go. <laughs> One thirty-nine. Boom. Look at that. Forecasted fourteen hours by the her cells on the Colorado, New Mexico, Oklahoma. That's just mind blowing to me that that we can do this, which is why you're seeing bigger and bigger chaser convergences. By the way, so yeah, we got our two p.m. Uh, initiation. Four forty-five p.m. This is a few hours later. This is a closer look of that cell. So this produced a weak tornado. After that goes out full dominant, I'm going to zoom down here to this other cell where on velocity you can kind of see some rotation and get another little uh, tornado out of that one. So at 825, here they are moving down into the panhandles, you know, cluster of storms. Here's a comparison of a 7 a.m. run for and, and what actually happened. I mean, you A plus, guys. That's 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 awesome. Here's the tornado coming out of the rain. It was rain wrapped and actually came out of the rain, which is weird. You don't always see that. It had a beautiful wall of turquoise that was, that was inside. And here it is roping out. And then here's the next little tornado, a brief little spin up under that little nub. It all went out flow dominant, and then we moved into lightning mode after that. Okay, uh, next place we're going to look at is uh, West Kansas on May 21st. Uh, here's my spaghetti. I'm liking the higher end of that outlook. Storm Prediction Center gives a 5%, it was 2% earlier. And so the 10 a.m. run for 3 p.m., we've got some showers forming up here. The uh, 10 a.m. run for 4 p.m., and we've got definitely some storms underway by 4 p.m. So we're going to expect initiation around 3 p.m. and expect storms by 4 p.m. in western Kansas. At 10 a.m., it looks like the event's over. So it's going to be a daylight event, maybe only a short window for uh, storms. Here's our target area. We've got Kew Field in eastern Colorado that's going to be drifting downstream into us. We've got this guy down here that's annoying us. What's he doing? He's not supposed to be there. He's supposed to be there. Okay, so the 1 p.m. run, there's that her picking up on that guy moving, tracking uh, northeast. It's a 1 p.m. run for 3 p.m. is saying, yep, we've got cells. It's probably going to happen. Storm Prediction Center says, with a more intense supercell or two probable over southwest Kansas, where the tornado risk should be greater. So, okay, I hear that. Uh, 2 p.m. run for 7 p.m., the event's going to end early, according to this. Maybe, a, you know, a quick up and down. We'll see that a lot. 4.40 p.m., nothing's going on. 
And at this point, you've got a clear sky, and, and your best tool you have under these clear skies is your eyes. The clouds will tell you all these clues of what's going on, especially when you have goats. So 444, nothing's going on. 515, you've got these little pop-ups that are just popping up, little showers popping up. Nothing's going on. So the herd did not do a good job. It might have been a strong EML that day sometimes when there's a, you know, it's harder to know where the coverage is going to happen. You know, is it going to break the cap? How much sunshine are we going to get? And at 6.10 p.m., we finally got this ugly cluster of storms here drifting into northwestern Kansas. So here's a closer look at that storm cell uh, cluster. I mean, when you see that, you don't think beautiful supercell, right? You're not seeing this beautiful hookup go, this, this snail. You know, if I was at home and I didn't chase that day and I, I saw that, I'm like, oh, okay, good. I'm glad it didn't go out that day. And here's the first tornado of that cell. Here's the mesocycle. Here's the second tornado from that storm. And here's the third tornado of that storm. All of these tornadoes were very transient, very brief, weak. They behaved more like satellites. They were coming around the uh, back side of the mesocyclone, and they would do a quick U-turn around the front side of the mesocyclone counterclockwise, and, and they would die. Different kind of uh, tornado altogether. There's our mesocyclone. And here's where those tornadoes would come along here along this interface, and then they would whoop, look around there, and then they would die. Some of the most beautiful storm structure that I've ever seen was on this day. This is the Leote supercell. This is looks like about 9 o'clock, so the event did not die out at 7 o'clock. It's 9 o'clock, and we're still watching this amazing rotation. Now, this cell is starting to go away. Now I'm in lightning mode. I'm trying to get structure and lightning. And then another cell fires up to the north. And I mean, look at those stacked plates. And, and it, just, it just went on. This is you know well after 10 o'clock. Yeah, 9.52, so no, initiation did not happen. The storms were not well underway. Uh, sorry, her, we got to give you an F on this one, right? Did, did, didn't handle this one so well. So each event are different. When there's an obvious boundary or a triple point, you know, it can really give you confidence picking up on those things. And these are things you might have even picked up on your own if you're a well-seasoned forecaster. You might not need to look at that. But it's still nice to get our confirmation bias if you look at it. If you don't like one of the her runs, just wait. The next one will give you what you want. <laughs> All right, so here's a comparison of a run for 4 p.m. and what actually happened, and you can see that that didn't handle that that particular event so well. Okay, so now we're going to breeze through the next couple of days uh, just to show you a comparison of a, of a 10 a.m. run for 4 p.m., what actually happened at 4 p.m. So the HER is, is, is telling us there's going to be some, it looks like cells, maybe mixed modes, and then here we, we, we've kind of got that. The aerial coverage might not be exactly the same, but Still a pretty good job. The same day, uh, here's the HER has a cluster of storms kind of congealing around the Red River, and, and, and that looks pretty good. I mean, that's okay. And so that day I was up on this cell up here, got an ugly tornado I don't want to show you guys. So HER did a pretty good job handling that day. Here's, here, here was the prize of that day. It was a close CG lightning strike that I got in slow motion. I mean, just, and this is super wide angle land, and bam, 50 yards in front of me. It was one of those strikes, those negative strikes that was on the ground for a long time. You know, usually, you know, it wasn't just a pop. You got to stare at it, and then for the next 30 minutes, every time you blink, you see it. <laughs> and, and, and so, I mean, look at the, the smoldering segments of the channel breaking up, and I got really high resolution stills of, or grabs of, of that bead line. So, next day, so here's one of the runs for 4 p.m. Uh, looks like some really good, I mean, when I saw that, I'm like, ooh, that looks good. That's where I want to be. You know, and then here's what happened at 350. So we've got our cell, not as much coverage, but it, it did a pretty good job of the initiation on that boundary. You can see that, that boundary right there. And uh, But I was on the cell, it was really weak. So it, it, that went up and went down. There was nothing going on on that cell. So it really didn't do so good, perhaps, in my interpretation of the intensity of that. Uh, how are we on time? Five minutes? Ooh, here we go. All right, so uh, uh, here's another run for 2 p.m. So, uh, and then what happened at 5 p.m. So kind of different things going on here, the 12 p.m. run and the 2 p.m. run. But one thing that's consistent is, is, is something's going to happen on that boundary. And that, that's good enough. You know, yeah, I feel confident something's going to happen. Here's the goes of, of the cells. And so I left this cell. I come down here to these cells around Turkey, Texas. The 4 p.m. run says everything's going to move out of Texas by 9 p.m., but at Woodward, we're going to have this big cluster. Ah, oh, man, maybe I should have stayed up there near Woodward. 
but I committed down here, so I got lured and suckered down here. Here's that cell. Uh, it was a beautiful supercell. The sun went down. There was one road going in, and so I bailed. And, and I wish I wouldn't have. I would have just waited. And an extra minute, I would have gotten a shot of a, a wedge at night. Gene Moore, you guys know Gene Moore, right? He got just beautiful photographs of illuminated storm structure and the tornado all together. I'm so jealous of the shots that he got that I missed them. So two days in a row and I missed the tornado show really by just, just moments. And okay, here's the next day. So uh, we've got, I mean, Storm Prediction Center gives a bullseye. You wake up, you see a 10% chance. That's going to, I'm kind of thinking, okay, right? I'm not going to go, well, I want to know what's happening over here. Here's our 145 goes. Look at the boundary. This is probably an outflow boundary from the previous day's Woodward storms, which did happen. So Storm Prediction Center says a 10% chance of tornadoes here. You see this boundary like that with a little bubbling happening right here. That, that's looking like our spot. Look at the uh, boundary there, that brown line, and then there it is, superimposed over the uh, over the uh, map. Three o'clock, Storm Prediction Center brings out those hash marks. Okay, all right, so it's business time. 337 goes, and we've got this cell up here in this 2%, 5%, you know, on the northern end of just on that low. And uh, here's a closer look at that cell. Look at how you've got these two areas of gate to gate shear this. Uh, it looks like a, a cyclic supercell, and, and, and the, the, you check Twitter. That's what you do. You go, what's going on? And boom, there it is. Photo of tornado. Anytime a tornado happens, you go to Twitter. Boom, close up, clear view of tornado. I mean, but nobody can get a UFO. <laughs> you guys need to up your game with UFO chasers. All right, so uh, final nine. Here's that storm going crazy. It, it, I have to admit, it had a gravitational pull. It pulled me north, north towards it. Just in case something didn't happen here, I'm cutting ground between there, but but something did happen. We've got this cell fired up right there, and I'm on it, and that's what we're looking at. So notice we didn't even check the herd today. Who's going to forecast when you see that, right? So this will go on to do that. This blew my mind, guys. This was like, I felt like I was seeing conception from a microscope. I don't know. <laughs> what? <laughs> So, and th this was the most beautiful tornado I've ever seen. It, was, it went through all the shapes, I mean, classic shapes, high base, well lit, no rain, and, and just, just moving north in a good road work. It was just incredible, I mean, driving next to this thing for, you know, 15, 20 minutes. It died. This is the next significant tornado. Uh, and this is probably one of my favorite shots that I've ever gotten with these other two Three tornadoes happening on the ground. I'm really lucky because this road turned into quicksand. I, I, I didn't want to stop. I had to stop. I got out. That happened for all three were on the ground for a nanosecond. I was able to get one shot of that. Here's three or four minutes later of the cyclic supercell. This is that big one dying, a new one forming. Uh, this is north of Dodge City. The same cell for the, for the life of this. Two tornadoes, three tornadoes were on the ground. Here's this cell. Tim Marshall said this was one of the most, I think his most uh, successful days he ever had. And he says something like that. You know, you know, it's probably special. Another guy, I posted a picture on Facebook and he said, this was the first time I ever went storm chasing. <laughs> All right, so here's a look at that cyclic supercell. Here's the first tornado dying. Here's the next one. Type. Okay. Next day I wake up in Grand something. Where, where is that? Uh, what's that town? Grandview? No. Um, what is it? Great Bend. Thank you. Thank you. Great Bend. I wake up at 11.30. 2% uh, uh, chance of tornado. You know something's going to happen, but where? There's going to be a big storm. You know, five days, you just go back to bed. And then you wake up at 5 p.m. And, and you see it that. You go outside, and that's what you see. Who's going to check the herd on a day like that, right? So... You just drive. 6.32, goes tornado warning, drops a little weak transient tornado, and this will go on to drop that guy, which will turn into 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 that guy. So this was the, the Abilene, what we call the Abilene, Kansas, EF4, was on the ground for 90 minutes, didn't kill anybody. I don't know. I mean, it just blows my mind when that 
you know, it's, it's such a relief to hear when you see these moments. I got to shut up now. I think my time's up. <laughs> so, so yeah. So uh, there you go. I think that says a bunch of stuff. And uh, there you go. Do we have time for questions, or should we let you? Front row.